All right, welcome to Fink's Guide to Custom Setups. I'm your host, Fink, and this is my guide to custom setups. Not sure what else you would expect. Okay, so uh, disclaimer: this works for trucks, Xfinity, and Cup, and it can work to some extent for dirt. I don't really make dirt setups, but uh, you're welcome to try. And there, there is like probably going to be some level of success. Um, so what I want you to do first is pick a slider that's like good for you at a specific track. Um, so for me, trucks at gateway, I'll, I'll just go with a one loose slider. Uh, one to the right. You know, for, for a different series at a different track, it might be different. So for Atlanta Cup, I might be right in the middle between tight and loose for for Texas I might be one tight for um, I don't know Xfinity at Kentucky I might be all the way loose it just depends on the track just make it like your series and track just pick a slider that that works for you that you know that you can drive okay so for, for Trucks at Gateway, for me personally, I'm going to choose uh, one one loose, okay? So you apply that recommended setup to the race category. And then what you do from here is your shocks over here, uh, your bumps and rebounds. I want you to cut all the numbers in half, okay? So go 12 to 6, 12 to 6, 12 to 6 and 12 to 6 okay so then obviously you can't cut nine and a half so it's 4.5 so what I want you to do is add 0.5 so half of nine is 4.5 so you get down to five okay and what I want you to do here is for every track every series doesn't matter your slider every single time you put your front ride height to the lowest and your rear ride right the rear ride height to the lowest okay so now what I want you to do is okay so the difference between these is 280 uh, so you need to remember that number that the difference is 280 and then your front left spring is always going to go up to 1200 every time okay so now we bring this number up to 920 because the difference between the slider the for the original front left and right springs the slider difference was 280 so that difference is always going to be the same, but you always bring your front left spring up to 280, okay? And we have a similar method for the rears. So the difference between these is 100, except this time, instead of the left and top number, it's going to be the right and bottom number that's going to go all the way up, and you're going to bring it to 600, okay? And then since the difference between uh, that and the other one was 100. We're going to bring this up to 500. Okay. Um, tire pressures don't really matter a lot for right now, but I suppose we can get to them later. So, um, camber determines the tilt of your wheel, um, whether it's perpendicular to the track. So, if I have a, a camber of zero degrees, that means my tire is perfectly perpendicular to the track. If my camber is two degrees, um, that means it's it's 88 degree it it it's at an 88 degree angle to the track, and it's facing it's tilted to the left two degrees. Okay. So this gives us, uh, since most of the tracks we race on are left-handed, we're going to make it 
are are left turning tracks. I mean, almost every track besides the road courses. You want this to be as high as possible so you get the best turn possible. But if you make it too high, your tires are going to wear out super fast. So a good spot that I find is three. Now with the right front, you're going to want it to be the opposite direction of the the left camber. So it's going to be negative three. And the reason for that is because uh, the left front is facing outward away from the truck and into the track. And the right front is is facing, is tilted, sorry, tilted the same way as the left front, except it's facing into the car. It's facing into the truck. So, and this is for left-handed tracks, speedways, super speedways, and every short track, I guess. So, then we have the sway bar. The rear sway bar is only available on road courses, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so, sway bar, we can bring this down a little bit. 1.875 is just too high of a sway bar. Uh, the best setups usually have sway bars in between 1.775 and 1.35. This low, you're going to have to have your track bars really low. So your sway bar, the relationship between your sway bar and your track bars is the higher your sway bar goes, the higher your track bars go. The lower your sway bars, the lower your track bars go. So it's a directly proportional relationship. So we were at 8.75. We'll take it down to two clicks to 6.75. Now, the front sway bar really affects um, how loose or tight you are in entry. So if you're tight on entry, you want to go down on your sway bar. Um, if you're really loose on entry, you want to go up on your sway bar. The track bars particularly affect um, how loose or tight you are on exit, and it's mostly th the right track bar. So, if you're tight on exit, uh, you want to bring up the track bar a little bit, and if you're loose on exit, you want to bring it down a bit. Uh, there are other solutions to being loose on exit, such as upping the front weight, uh, or upping the wedge, perhaps, and then you can also adjust the spring settings a little bit. The the right front spring, generally the lower you go, the looser you will be on both entry and exit. Um, but we will we'll learn how to adjust that more in a little bit. So since I since I started at 1.875 here and I'm down to 6.75. I gotta bring the track bars down as well. So I'll bring it way down here. Um, so grill tape. We're at 40% right now, but that was we still haven't adjusted that from the slider setup. So you want to bring that up, okay? And gear settings. Um, some people with wheel setups only have three gears. If that's the case for you. You want to bring it uh, a lot farther down. I personally am on a controller, so I just bring it down a little bit. Um, and that is how I manage my gears. I It's going to depend on the track again, but personally for me, I've lowered 1, 1, 1, and then 2 for this track. And I've upped my grill tape to, we'll say, 55 um, and then for front weight, you always want to be over 50. Um, it can help when you are loose on exit. This is going to really help us. Okay, so now we've adjusted our setup. Tire pressures look decent. Uh, tire pressures, by the way, are probably the least important part of your setup, unless you're on super speedways, which we'll get to in a little bit. So, yeah, I guess I'll just bring this down real quick. 
Um, so, we're loose. We're gonna be loose. Probably. Um, and the important part is just to test it. And, you know, see where we get. Okay, hey, get back in there. Let's go. Actually, we're gonna, we'll compare setups. So this is me, this is a slider setup and we'll see how fast we go. You're clear Obviously, the road. If, you're, if your custom is slower than your slider, you've done something horribly wrong and you probably need to restart the video. Um, if you don't want to, um, watch me test, you can probably just skip ahead a little bit, but I'm just doing it to show the difference between, um, how loose we are and how fast it is, just generally speaking. So right there, I'm getting, uh, I'm redlining into fourth gear, and although my right rear is higher temperature than my left for er, blah, than my right front um, I do feel a little bit tight right here and I messed up that tournament I can definitely put in a better lap than that Alright, so lapping around at 34.3, 34.4. I'm going one more lap. That was much better. We could probably get 34.2. We'll try it again just to just to see. You're clear and also road. should be noted that I am on 1x wear. Your setup will perform will it will perform differently based on the the wear that you are racing on. So if you're so difference between 1x and 4x where your setup is going to perform way differently might get looser quicker uh, usually won't get tighter but it'll get looser a lot quicker um, so you just need to test beforehand and make sure that's not a problem during the race or just you know up the wedge during the race change your tire pressures change your tape change what you can during the race to adjust that Okay, so 34.1. That's probably about as good as we're going to get on a slider. Alright, so now we go into the race setup, okay, that we made. And we're going to see how much it has improved. Just see if it's loose or tight, see what's the deal. You're see what's clear going up that road. It, for almost all of your setups, it will probably be very loose. Uh, your like your first initial setup before you get out onto the track that will probably be very loose uh, right now I just happen to be feeling a little bit tight uh, 
Um, but you should see at least, at the very least, a two tenths improvement on your times. Uh, it's usually like three or four or even five tenths with the really good setups. And this is this is a race setup we're talking about. Uh, with a qualifying setup, you should you can usually get like an extra tenth or two. And we'll go over how to make a good qualifying setup as well. So I'm feeling a little tight on this setup. Yeah, definitely tight as I drift up the track there. Uh, but don't be, you know, don't be sad if your setup, don't get frustrated, you know, just keep working on it if your setup is tight or loose. Uh, the good part about custom setups is we get to adjust, like, all parts of the car, not just the tape, not just the, the, uh, the wedge, not just the tire pressures. Okay, so we have improved a little bit. Uh, but notice how on that straight there, we're not redlining. And in the slider setup, we were at the top, the very top of our gear ratio. We were redlining. Okay, so I'm feeling a little bit tight on this setup. My tire wear on my rights are about even. Okay, a little bit more on the right rear. So I think what we're going to do, see an even better lap time. I've already improved by a tenth. So I think what we're going to do here, and, and also look at my oil temperature, we're in the 230s, the ideal oil temperature is going to be in the 250s, you get as close to 260 as you can, so 255 if possible, but our oil temperature is not high enough right now, it's not in an ideal temperature. So what we're going to do is, to increase the oil temperature, we bring up the grill tape, usually a 5% increase in grill tape will equate to about a five percent or blah five degree Fahrenheit uh, temperature increase so we're gonna bring it up to we'll say 70 and what this does is it gives us more downforce which allows us to turn better okay and since we're tight we want to turn better and that's a good thing okay so now uh, I'm not really slipping loose off the corner so now what I think I want to do is bring the wedge down just a couple of clicks and we'll bring the sway bar down as well um, and that's only what one two three adjustments bring it about down a little bit more Be ready. Get after it now. Get after it now. You're clear. And we'll see what happens here. Okay, so now I'm feeling a little bit looser already. You can kind of see the back end of the car start to get a little bit loose on entry. And Loose on entry is a lot better than loose on exit. There we go, look at that. We've improved by like two or three tenths, right? Because my best my best setup on a slider was like a 34.1 and we've reached a 33.8 right there. So already we're we're three tenths up. Let's see if I can get any better here. Look at my oil temperature is slowly climbing. And 
and I feel a little bit tight in the middle pushing there. So what I might want to do is is lower the wedge. Okay, so this setup is probably going to get loose on the long run. The tape is really good. The oil temperature is really good right where we want it. Um, but the point has been made. We have faster laps. Um, so you maybe want to bring your right rear pressures down a little bit or your right front pressures up or both you might want to up your front weight to um, counter the the sliding out on exit and then you can bring your left springs up I wouldn't bring it up to 600 but go as high as 560 maybe 570 or 580 um, you can bring it up a little bit and then this is probably a little bit low um, so we can bring this up a little bit um, we'll just see how that runs really quick but that setup the previous setup with right, those dig, changes dig, dig. Um, that on the long run that car would have gotten loose so you want to tighten it up a little bit because we're loose on entry, tight middle, loose exit. Um, but it's like, it's more of a good loose than a, whoa, my car is sliding all over the track loose. But in the, over the long run, it would have been a, whoa, my car is sliding all over the track loose. So that feels a bit better. And we didn't, I don't think I even brought the wedge down on, on that. Very good. All right, 30, almost a 33.7 flat. All right, so now we're like four tenths up on our original time. Cause to celebrate for sure. And my tire wear is a bit more even. So now for qualifying setups, okay? What you wanna do is just copy your race setup. Just straight up copy it. And you can go back and forth as many times as you need to. Just take a screenshot or whatever you need to do. Just copy it. Just copy it over. Uh, oh yeah, make sure you save. Why save? Confirm setup save. Oh, by the way, uh, wheel lock and steering offset just don't really matter. Um... So those are like, I think steering offset is like how far your car drifts to the left or right, like on a straight, and then I don't even know what wheel lock does. 
so doesn't really matter um, just checking back and forth here to make sure they're all the same Okay, so now they're exactly the same. So what I want you to do now is bring your left front camber up even more and your right front camber up all the way up here to six degrees. Um, what's that's gonna do, what this is gonna do is allow us to turn even better. You can bring your grill tape up one or maybe two clicks you're gonna bring your front weight down a couple of clicks maybe and your wedge down a couple of clicks if you if you feel like your race setup is our oh I almost forgot this whoops okay if you feel like your race setup is already a bit loose just go really easy with it only bring it down one click Okay. Um, for front weight and wet, the front weight and wedge, but for the camber and grill tape, you really need to bring it up to six and bring it up one or two clicks. Okay. So with with the camber adjustments we've made, we should be able to even get another tenth, just about and we'll see what happens so let's set our goal time for 33.65 right, and it will be loose it will be loose for sure uh, that's how a qualifying setup should be it's just over the course of one lap what the camera adjustment does is we're gonna turn really well but our tires are gonna wear really fast and that's a trade-off we're willing to make because it's one qualifying lap Boom, 33.65, okay, that's close, that's close enough. Um, so you should try to get about a tenth. We can probably, uh, about, about a tenth, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, two tenths if you're really lucky. And my oil temperature is a little bit low, so we can probably increase that a bit, uh, up to 80, because remember, it's just one super fast lap. Okay, and I am feeling a little tight middle, so I'm going to bring this down a bit, a bit more. Alright, dig, dig, dig! And the key for a good qualifying lap as well, like, this can help you even if you're racing sliders, is just get a good exit on your out lap. Get a very good exit. And if that means sacrificing entry, then you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Because it's not a time lap, your out lap is not a time lap.
Alright, a little bit slower. You can chalk that up to skill though. Me not having any skill. Not necessarily the setup being worse. Yeah, so now my oil temperature is a little too high. I did two laps. Um, I'll try it one more time just to see if I can get any better, but I don't. Okay, get back I might in there. Let's to, go. I might not be able to. And of course, for your race setup, you need to test over the long run as well. And make sure it's, you know, not loose. Try it on different times wears as well. And there I go, messing up my, my exit lap. Again, you can skip this part if you don't want to see the results. Pretty much, I mean, a couple thousandths off. It's pretty much the exact same. I feel a little tight right there. And loose off. So, what I'm going to do is, okay feeling it so I'm gonna bring my front sway bar down a little bit I'll bring my front way up and my wedge down um, you're probably gonna get really loose if you try this so just depends on how skilled you are remember none of you're this custom setup road. stuff will fix a skill issue and that's just the hard truth yep really loose your sway bar can also affect you know how loose you are on exit Um, I messed it up now <laughs> from getting too loose. Next part of this video will probably just be just me trying to get a better lap. So go ahead and watch a little bit more if you like. But the main points have been made here. Still need to do some more adjusting because I think I can get below I think I can improve that time even more I'm gonna bring my track bar down a little bit and my front weight up a little bit because I'm sliding on exit I really am but that's I mean kind of the point of a qualifying match just make it as easy as possible where you can still control it and as fast as possible over the course of one lap But we made it from a 34.1 to a 33.6. And I think that that is very impressive. We've, we've improved almost half a second.
Okay, it feels a little bit better on exit now. I might even bring my cambers to 7 degrees just to get that little bit of extra turn. There we go, 33.63. So that's about as good as we're going to get here. So I think the race setup was like a 33.71 and we got it down to 33.63. So about an 8, 100th improvement, almost an improvement of a 10th. So that is how you do it for super speedways. Um, and remember, it's generally applicable across all series and you need to make adjustments um, depending on how loose you are the track you need to adjust your sway bars you need to make adjustments your first setup is not going to be perfect um, but I hope this helps and I'll be back with another video here in a little bit um, for super speedways and road courses so thanks for watching